Greetings, turdlings. Between the SE Electronics V7 and the Dynacaster, which of them is better for close micing your voice? And which of them does a better job at background noise rejection? That's what we're going to be testing today. The V7 has 53 dB of gain. The Dynacaster has 59 dB of gain. No dynamite engaged. And the EQ switch set to neutral. For the close miking test, I am about one inch away from the V7. This has no EQ switches, so we have no control there. I decreased my gain to about 47 dB, and here is how it sounds. Now I am on the Dynacaster about one inch away. I decreased my gain to 53 dB. Again, the EQ switches are set to neutral, but we do have those if we want to shape the sound a bit more. And here is how it sounds compared to the V7. And back again on the SEV7 for a second comparison when we are close miking about one inch away. And here is your second sample on the SE Dynacaster about one inch away from the end of the grill with no EQ switches engaged and no dynamite engaged. Which one did you like the sound of better? Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of that noise the SEV7 can reject. And now I'm typing on the same keyboard in the same position to see how much of that noise the Dynacaster can reject with the EQ switches set to neutral. Now let's do a very imperfect and non-scientific test where I see how much white noise these microphones can reject from my iPhone. And now let's see how much of the reverb in this studio each of these microphones rejects and how much they pick up. Now that my absolutely perfect testing is done, what are my thoughts? As far as the overall sound of the microphones, I still think that I prefer the SEV7 right out of the box. As far as close miking, I think the SEV7 suffers too much from plosives. I think the proximity effect gets a bit too out of hand. And that's why I think the Dynacaster does a lot better if you are going to be close miking an inch or two away from the sound source. You also get those additional EQ switches to really fine tune the sound that you want. So if it is too muddy, you can do a high pass filter. If you want more top end, you have the two different high shelves on there. So for that application, I think the Dynacaster slightly wins out. But if you don't have to worry about plosives or if you don't have to worry about the proximity effect, I still prefer the V7. That is going to be more of a personal preference call. Do you like the V7 sound four or five inches away? Or do you like the Dynacaster sound four or five inches away? Or do you really value that dynamite circuit inside? And do you value those EQ switches, which are very usable. As far as the background noise rejection, I think the Dynacaster did slightly worse than the V7. It picked up a bit more of the keyboard, picked up a bit more of the white noise from the sides and the rear, and it also picked up a touch more of the reverb from the room. That was very slight though. So if my main focus was background noise rejection, I would give the SEV7 a slight edge here. So to summarize my thoughts, for close miking, I think the Dynacaster is the winner because in my opinion, it handled the proximity effect better, it handled plosives better, and it gives you the ability to EQ the microphone to get a bit more top end or to control the low end a little bit more. For background noise rejection, I think the SEV7 was the winner. 
I don't really have any commentary there, just based on my brief tests, it seemed to reject a bit more of the background noise. And finally, as far as the overall sound, I still prefer the SE V7, but as far as the functionality, as far as the versatility, the Dynacaster really brings a lot to the table. That is it. Bye-bye. Boop.